Hello there, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills and grow as a designer. In this tutorial, we're going to be learning how to create a minimalistic logo in Adobe Illustrator. So to start with, I'm going to create a new document, 900 pixels wide and 900 pixels high. And I'm going to select the ellipse tool and just left click and hold shift to draw a circle. So the logo that we're going to be creating is for a fictional tech company. The fictional company's name begins with B, so we're going to have a letter B within our design. And then we're going to incorporate a power symbol within the B as well. So we've got our circle here. We're just going to swap the fill and the stroke and then actually remove the stroke altogether. So we just have a black circle. Next, we're going to select the line tool, left click and hold shift to draw a vertical line. And then from the stroke panel on the right, we can specify a width. And let's change the color to black as well. This is going to be the ascender on our letter B. So let's increase that. Let's go for 100. Okay, I'm happy with that width. No, I'm not. I'm going to change it. 120. 120. So when you're happy with that width, just go to Object, Expand, Leave Fill and Stroke selected and click OK. So now this is no longer recognized as a stroke. However, with my Smart Guides turned on, remember that's View and Smart Guides. With those turned on, I can now align this to the left edge of the circle. So you'll see it nicely snaps in place. Now it looks a little bit stumpy there, but that's fine. I can select the Direct Selection tool. Just drag over those top two anchor points and hold shift and drag those up. Now what I should have done really was round off that shape while it was still a stroke. But we've kind of gone past that now, but that's okay. All I need to do is select this rectangle here. And in the transform panel, it'll show me the properties. So we've got a width of 120 pixels. So if I just create a circle, by left clicking on the artboard and I'll just set the width and the height to 120. There we go, so it matches that rectangle and with the direct selection tool I just need to select that bottom anchor point and then hit delete or backspace and it will leave me with a semicircle that I can then use as a cap and just manually add this on. So we've got our B shape. If I press command or control Y in outline mode, you can see that we've still got it made up of lots of different shapes. What I'm going to do is just hold Alt and left click to drag a copy of this. We'll put that over there just in case we need it. So we have our B shape. Let's just move this to one side and we're going to create our power symbol. Now this is going to sit within the circle here. So let's select the ellipse tool, left click and hold shift to draw another circle. We'll make this a bit smaller so it fits inside here nicely. And this time we're going to have no fill and we will have an outline. So let's just thicken that stroke weight up a little bit. Let's go for 26. Maybe a tad smaller. In fact, what I'm going to do is just change the color of the stroke to white and I'm just going to drop it inside just so I can kind of get an idea of how it's going to be when it's finished. So there we go. You can scale towards the center, up or down by holding Alt and Shift and dragging from one of the corners like so. And you'll see the Smart Guides very nicely help snap it to the center. So I'll bring it down a tiny bit more. Perfect, so that's good. Let's change that back to black. Or you can use a different color. Sometimes it's quite useful to work with really, really bright colors just while you're working up shapes and kind of getting everything together. And then once you've got everything together and the shapes are all working nicely, then you can put the correct colors in. So what we're going to do is left click on the line tool and again, left click and hold shift to draw a vertical line. And just drag over both the line and the circle and in the align panel just make sure that they're horizontally aligned to the center. Now this is what I should have done before with the top part of the B. If I zoom in from the stroke panel you can change the cap type to round and it rounds off those corners for you. So that's a quicker way of doing it. 
And we can bring this down. Remember, you can lengthen this with the direct selection tool by just dragging on either the top or the bottom anchor point, and dragging it up or down as you need to. So there we go. We've nearly got our power symbol. Let's select the add anchor point tool from the pen tool drop down. Just left click and hold and you'll get those additional options. And what we can do is you'll see the smart guides nicely mark along this path here. So we can just click here and it will add an anchor point. And we can do the same over here. Now what we need to do is select the direct selection tool just click anywhere else on the artboard to deselect that shape. And where these two anchor points are that we just created, we want to click anywhere along that line in between those two points with the direct selection tool. So we'll do that and then we'll hit delete or backspace and it removes one side and we'll do that on the other side as well. And if you really, really want to be particular, we've still got that central anchor point. So we can get rid of that. What I'm going to do is with the main selection tool, just select this line here and go to edit, cut. With the direct selection tool, drag over this central bit. You can see that anchor point is now selected and then hit delete or backspace and then go to edit, paste in place and it will paste back in that shape. You don't have to do that, but generally it's quite good practice to tidy up any loose anchor points just so they don't become involved when we're combining shapes in future or to complicate anything. So let's select this lower part of the circle now. And again, we're going to go into the stroke panel and round off that cap. And we can bring this down a little bit. So there we go, we've got a pretty good power symbol. Again, with the direct selection tool, we can adjust the line as we like. So we can move the position, change the height. And again, once we're happy, it's always a good idea to just hold Alt and drag a copy of our power symbol over there. That is still editable. We can still adjust the stroke width if we like. So it's always good to have a copy that we can adjust if we need to. Right. So let's move this here. We'll bring our B, all of our B, back onto the main artboard. And we can now position this so we're happy. So that's looking good to me. We can adjust the size of this overall, or we can adjust the stroke weight because it's all still editable. And then we pick a color for this stroke. So let's go with white we can get a good idea of how it's actually going to look. So what we can do now is we're pretty much ready to finalize this logo. Let's select all of the black shapes on our artboard. So we've got the tall part of the B, the ascender, we've got the cap at the top and then the main circle. With those selected, you can go into the Pathfinder panel and just left click on the top left option, which is Unite and you'll see that those individual shapes all become one complete shape. So we've got the B. Next, we're going to select by holding shift both of the parts of our power symbol and go to object, expand, leave fill and stroke selected, click OK. Now these are still two individual parts, even though they're not recognized as a stroke anymore. However, again, we can select both of these by holding shift and in the Pathfinder panel, unite those into one shape. So now when we move this around, it's one complete shape. And there's a couple of things we can do now. If we add a background in, so let's select the rectangle tool and we'll just draw a background that's 900 pixels wide and high. And let's give this a background color. We can double click a swatch, select preview and global and adjust the sliders until we get something that we're happy with. Let's go for a nice dark color. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to go to object lock and selection with that shape selected just so I don't drag and move around the background by mistake. So now we can bring our shape back onto the artboard. 
make sure that it is above your background. So if you go to Object, Arrange and Bring to Front, now when we drag this on, it will appear in front because any new shapes that you do create will appear on top of existing shapes. So let's give this a color. We can double click another swatch now. And we're going to give our, the body of our logo its own color. There we go, lovely. And what we can do is we can leave this power symbol as a white color if we like. I'm actually going to rotate the B. So I'm going to hold shift and rotate. That's probably a little bit too much of an angle. I'll try rotating from the corner and we'll rotate it slightly. There we go. Actually, I'm going to undo that with the direct selection tool. Just drag over the top of the B and use the arrow keys just to nudge that down just so it's not as tall as it was before. So with that selected, let's do that rotation again. And you can adjust this until you're happy. I think that's looking pretty good. Now there's two versions we could do here. We could do one like this with a white play symbol, or we could select the play symbol, hold shift and select the blue background as well. And in the Pathfinder panel, select subtract or minus front. And it will knock out that shape from the blue shape. And in fact, I think that's the one I'm happy with. So I'm going to go with that. And lastly, I'm going to select my shape, make sure that I'm aligning to the artboard and then align it both horizontally and vertically in the middle. And you can see what it looks like in outline mode. Remember that's command or control Y. And there we go, there's our completed shape. And there we go, that's how to create a minimalistic logo in Adobe Illustrator. As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time. I think that went pretty well. First time on a green screen.